Hello everyone and welcome to our instructional video on how to pair your Garmin handheld device to AB Quantum. So in this video we're going to go over how to use uh, AB in the Garmin handheld, how to pair this to your device and utilize AB Quantum with the Garmin handheld as well. Make sure your device is fully charged before you do this. Um, another note is that Garmin devices pair slightly different than other devices. As you can see, we have AB Quantum open here, and you can see there are no devices currently available despite the Garmin device itself being on and uh, technically ready to pair. So that's because you actually need to start, and we'll go ahead and back out here, with Garmin Connect. So in order to pair these two devices together, it's a bit of a two-step process with two different apps. Really a three-step process if you include what we have to do on the device itself. So we have our Garmin handheld here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to put that Garmin handheld into the mode ready to pair. So I'm going to go to, I'm here on the home screen. I'm going to go to setup. And you can see where it says pair phone. I'm going to tap on pair phone. And you can see here it says Garmin that we need to have one of these apps on our uh, phone or tablet or device really first. Explore Connect or Connect IQ. And I'm going to start with Garmin Connect. That's really what I recommend is that you download and have Garmin Connect already installed. And you can see that here on the phone that Garmin Connect is ready to go. So I'm going to tap pair. And this number here is important. Um, our broadcast ID or this device's serial number here is actually important for this process. The reason that's important is if you're in a classroom setting, at an expo, maybe at a shooting match or an event, you want to make sure that you pair to the correct device that you're trying to pair to, or even if you have multiple devices. So we need to reference this number here in a minute when we're in Garmin Connect. And with this device in pair mode, let's go ahead and go to our app here. There we go. Now we're in Garmin Connect. We're going to click on this little plus symbol in the top right hand corner. It's going to find it pretty quick here. But if it doesn't find the device you're looking for, maybe you have multiple Garmin devices, maybe you are in a classroom setting, you can always go to I have a different device browse all compatible devices you're going to have to do that and then you're going to want to click all devices here and bring up the master list because uh, it's not really in the short list for your handheld device and then you can scroll through here use the search function to pull that up in our case though it did bring the device up right away and we'll demonstrate that one more time click on the plus symbol up here in the corner it found it right away so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click connect then we're going to click, it's telling us it's going to take 30 seconds, maybe more. Then we're going to click start and we're going to wait for it to appear in this box. Now that number right here, our serial number that we have here, is the serial number we're going to be looking for to appear in this box. And once it does, we'll reference those to make sure they're correct. 083 and 083. Uh, we're not quite done yet though. Once I click this, it's actually going to go through a security mode. There it is. Do you want to allow this connection? We do. It's going to do that again and give us a pin key that we're going to input. There it is. These are randomly generated, so you're going to have uh, your own code. Please don't use this one. And then we're going to hit pair after we input that security code. And it's going to go through a setup process. Now I'm going to skip most of this because you can do this on your own and we're not interested in syncing calendars and other things for this video. So I'm just going to skip all of this. Um, but I recommend that you actually go through this process on your own. We'll hit OK. Yes, we're trying to skip through here. We do, you can download Garmin Explore on your own as well, and we're done. You can see here on the uh, Montana here, the Garmin handheld, it says uh, pairing is complete. So we'll go ahead and tap done there. Now looking through Garmin Connect here for just a brief moment, you'll see that you now have a device icon with a green dot in the top right hand corner. If you already had another Garmin device, um, 
maybe a tactics or a fortress or something, you wouldn't have had the plus symbol, you would have had this device symbol. And so you can click on that and then you can scroll down here and click add device and you can manage it that way. Also, um, through here you've got device settings and other things that you can do, uh, updating firmware, things like that. So just keep that in mind. This is the sync button if you want to sync um, this to your current Garmin Connect account. But for what we're intending to do, we're actually done with Garmin Connect because we can see that the handheld is in Garmin Connect. Now when I go back to AB Quantum after doing that, and give it a moment here, you'll see that it actually populates where before we did not have the Garmin handheld device, we now do have that as an option. It's available. I'm going to add it to AB Quantum by clicking either the plus symbol or you can just tap on the name. There it is. It's now connected. We have more information. Uh, we have our license level here, which is elite, our device ID, what it is. If I tap on the three dots, or if I tap on the gear icon, both are going to do essentially the same thing, except the three dots is going to allow me to remove it if I wanted to remove this device or access the settings. And here in the settings, there's just some pretty basic information about the unit. Now the, the um, Garmin handhelds are able to receive a profile from AB Quantum. So when you pair them, two things are going to happen. You can see here it says license is elite. If I go to settings, you'll see that the Montana 700 Elite License is there. And then because we have our app level, our license level, which is our level from our device, and then our purchased level. So these are two different things. If you had an ultralight version of the app, it would now be upgraded to Elite as long as they're actively connected. But you can see them on this Montana has an Elite level license. The other thing that you can do when paired to a Garmin handheld is we can sync profiles to the device. So uh, here from the profiles menu, I clicked on profiles down here, by the way, in the navigation bar to get here. I can select which of these profiles that I would like to send over to the Montana. So if I were to tap on, say, the 6547 and I don't know, maybe the 17 HMR. Just picking a couple things at random here. And then I click, by the way, clicking these bubbles selects which ones you're going to send over to the device. And I click sync to the device. It will now sync those profiles over to the handheld. There it is. It's done. And at this point, we're actually done with AB Quantum. That's what the handhelds can do with AB Quantum. And we're going to move on to the actual handheld itself and applied ballistics in the Garmin handheld. So here I'm at the home screen and you can see the applied ballistics app on this handheld. Uh, I'll tap on it to open it. And here we have our HUD, our elevation, wind one, wind two, um, our range. I can tap on any of these if I want to change them. Uh, direction of fire, I can use the compass or edit it. I'll just use the compass. Wind 1 um, or wind 2, I can change my wind speeds. For instance, if I wanted that to be 10 miles an hour and I wanted this to be 22 miles an hour by simply tapping on them and inputting those. We also have this display, which is basically more ballistic information um, or a ballistics output screen. And you can change any of these. Like if I wanted the horizontal Coriolis to be a different output, like max ordinance or time of flight or whatever that might be, I can essentially customize this screen. Now, one thing is important to note here that bullet drop, you'll see here is negative 219 inches, is not the same as your firing solution of 180 to 66. Um, bullet drop is the true drop that the bullet has experienced from the moment it left the barrel and not your corrected firing solution. So if you're looking at that, just be aware of that and you'll see that they actually don't line up because of that. Now I'm going to open, not, it's not that they don't line up, it's that they're two different outputs and they sh they're not going to equal each other per se. 
So I'm going to go ahead and open the menu here on this device as we walk through here and you'll see that we have a range card, a target card, the environment and the targets, profiles and setup. So if I go to setup, I have my input units here where I can switch essentially between uh, yards, meters and mixed. Um, mixed means I'm using meters for range and everything else will be statute like or inches. We have our wind unit options, and then we can turn some secondary effects off. The next thing is profiles. So we did send those profiles over, and you can see those here. Um, we can go in here and delete them as well if I just tap on it and I delete it. I can go here and I can change profile, which makes that profile now the active profile. I can also go into here and edit the name. I can add a new profile by clicking on the plus profile and then go into those metrics if I wanted to as well. I'm going to go ahead and open the menu again here. Go back to profile and you can see here we're on new profile too. I'm going to change to this profile here, the 17 HMR. Uh, under bullet properties, we actually have the full bullet database if you wanted access to that with CDMs. Um, I'm just randomly tapping on one here so you can see you have G1, G7, and custom. So that is something that you have. If you have a PDM, then you're going to need to load it from the app. And that's why connecting to the app is uh, really beneficial. One of the reasons. Um, the other reasons is if you don't want to pay for an elite subscription, you can bump your license level up to elite. And then you don't have that monthly subscription fee or yearly, however you've set it up. But also, um, if you want access to the personal drag models, you would do that through AB Quantum and then transfer them over, uh, transfer that profile over. But all of this is customizable here, so we do have the bullet database, but I can go in here and I can modify any of these that I wanted to by simply tapping on them and then using this keyboard. Okay. So we'll go back here, gun properties, um, we've got our muzzle velocity, zero range, uh, again, tap on any of these if you want to edit them. You've got sight scale factor in here, twist rate, you can calibrate muzzle velocity, you can calibrate DSF if you want to, and you have a muzzle velocity temperature table as well if you wanted to utilize that. And this is a fairly quick walkthrough, but this is pretty standard. All right, so the next thing we have are our targets. So here we can customize our targets if we wanted to. Um, I can go through here and adjust any one of these. These are out of range. A 17 HMR, 2,500 yards is a bit silly. So if they're out of range, this is what it's going to look like. Um, it's just too far of a shot for the firing solution to make sense, to put it uh, plainly. You can see which target is current so if I switch this to um, let's say target 3 I want this one to be 250 yards and then I set as current you'll see that's now the current target and if I go back that's the target that we're using here you see target 3 in this upper corner so um, we can edit the target name and customize that if we wanted to change the range. Uh, some things you can utilize the onboard sensors like direction of fire. I can utilize the compass, uh, but inclination you cannot. So you'll need to input that um, set as current and target speed if you have a moving target. You can edit all of these targets as you see fit. And then you'll have your target card where you can see the output of all of those targets here on one display. So, The environment information here, we have an auto update function if you want that to automatically update. We can adjust our winds here. Sorry about that. I double tapped for some reason. Here we go. We can adjust our winds here, wind 1, wind 2, and wind direction. Uh, you can use the compass or edit that manually if you'd like for wind direction. We can utilize, we can input our temperature, pressure, you can use the onboard sensors for pressure, humidity, I recommend you just set it to 50% and leave it alone. And then we have our range card, the last thing here. So on the range card, uh, you can adjust your range increment, that's the step size of the ranges on the range card. You can adjust your base range. This is the range that the range card starts at. 
and you can adjust uh, field one and field two. So if I wanted field, field one's currently elevation, but if I wanted it to be wind one, you can now see it's wind one. I'm going to switch that back to elevation though. And you can have field two be whatever you'd want if you wanted that lead for moving targets. Right now it's on wind one and wind two. If you wanted it to only be on wind one, etc., you could change field two to any number of these uh, outputs that you'd like to see there. And that is applied ballistics on the handheld. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, please like and subscribe to these videos. And hopefully this video was helpful. And we've got more coming for you all in the future. Thank you and have a good day.